Let's do some news! My name is Mike B, aka Phony. The time is 4 p.m. on September 24th, 2021! Welcome, everybody! I am joined today by my co host, Sunday. And also, my lovely chats. Is there a plural for that? Chat peoples. Peoples. Thank you. Chat said that they're going to be good. Stop picking on YouTube. God. Every time. Did you? Thank you. You said I was lovely. Yes, I did. All of you, collectively. But individually, though, some people bring the average down. So, you know, we'll just blank a statement and just be done with it. Just a little bit has happened in the past couple weeks. Chet? <laughs> just a little bit has happened in the past couple weeks. Uh, and we'll start off with some recent news I think a lot of you guys will be uh, a little excited for, maybe, hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully, maybe. Uh, there is... An, uh, an animated Mario Brothers movie coming was it next December or something? They're playing, they're 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 teasing this shit hella far in advance, and it stars a lot of people that you probably know. Excited is certainly a word. I'm excited. I'm ex opens at Redbox. Martha, dang, are you guys? How can you guys not be excited about this, man? Come on, but the original movie was good enough. No, it fucking was not. Okay, listen. Listen. Okay. That movie fucking sucked. All right? It fucking sucked. Good cast. All right? Great cast. But come on, man. The Goomba dudes or whatever with the tiny little heads. Come on. All right? It was not a good movie, but I still enjoyed it when I was a kid. When I was a kid... Still a guilty pleasure. That's right. Still a guilty pleasure, indeed. Um, that movie was so bad it was good. <laughs> John Luiziamo is a cod. Yes. Yes. No. <laughs> so here's your cast. Here is your cast. Uh, IMDb has a page up for it already. So let me go through this. So Anya Taylor Joy, who is this young lady right here, uh, we probably you guys probably know her from Queen's Gambit. Uh, and, uh, Peaky Blinders, uh, she is, she is, like, Hollywood's hot, like, hotness right now. Uh, I'm surprised Dwayne Johnson wasn't involved somehow. God, it's true, huh? She plays Daisy. Uh, I'm sorry, Peach, uh, and, uh, Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt, who everybody loves. Uh, <laughs> Parks and Rec. Guardians of the Galaxy. Who? He plays Mario. Uh, Charlie Day, probably know him as the conspiracy theory guy gif that everybody uses. <laughs> uh, he plays Luigi. I just hope Seth Rogen doesn't sound, make the laughing sound. The laughing sound. It's <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> You're stuck there. <laughs> She's like, what the fuck is that sound? <laughs> uh, Keegan Michael Key, Keegan Michael Key from uh, uh, Key and Peele, uh, former President Obama's translator. Uh, he plays Toad. Uh, Seth Rogen, you guys know he's Twitter shit poster. He's playing uh, Donkey Kong, and Bowser, played by popular YouTuber Jack Black. So it's a pretty loaded lineup that's a pretty loaded lineup okay there's a lot of people on this list uh and so hopefully that translates into a decent film but if you remember let's go to imdb the first film also had a pretty stacked lineup for the time let me see mario brothers not the super mario brothers super show <laughs> Although I love that show. <laughs> I love that show as a kid for sure. <laughs> Where is it not pulling it up? Okay, well now it just disappeared. Um but cat repellent, that sound. Stupid Marvel. Oh, it's not it's not pulling up the move. What the fuck? I just fucking saw it! <laughs> 
Now this search is a what am I doing wrong? <laughs> yeah, Lou Albano was in it. Lou Albano was also in um uh uh, uh how funny. Uh, yeah, I I just I was just looking at it. There it is. Wow, they buried it. That's so weird. Anyway, so yes, it has do 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 uh um uh Bob Hoskins was in it. Um he played in Roger Rabbit. He was uh, Eddie Valiant in Roger Rabbit. He was the main character in Roger Rabbit, except for Roger Rabbit. Uh, John Leguizamo, who's been in just like a million movies. Dennis Hopper. I mean, Dennis Hopper was hot, man. Dennis Hopper was like was like the bad guy at the time. Uh, Samantha Samantha Mathis was also in a bunch of movies at the time. She was kind of like she was kind of like the it girl at that moment. Um, and then there's just a bunch of folks that you've probably seen in other films since then. Uh, Fiona Shaw. Um, let me see, uh, Desiree Marie Velez, uh, and a couple others, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was a pretty good lineup at the time, like, all these people were pretty popular, uh, and they were, they were, um, uh, pulling in big numbers, box office, stuff like that, I mean, Anthony Hopkins was, uh, he was the bad guy in Speed, and, like, every other movie he played, so, like, yeah, it was, these are big names, so this is, this is feeling like it could be more successful because it's animated, and they're not gonna be actually acting the parts, which means we're not gonna see some kind of weird, like, real life rendition of toad or something like that thank god thank fucking god they could just stick with animation and it'll be just good you remember being the bad guy in speed i know that's a movie i gotta go back and watch again jeez uh narcissistic hollywood lineup equals crap everyone in hollywood is narcissistic it's just that narcissistic to some degree but it's okay though because um because pratt chris pratt had his own take his own uh feedback here our own uh comments up to make on it so when I was a kid, I lived in Lake Stevens, Washington, and there was this coin-operated laundromat near my house, and it had Super Mario Brothers, the original arcade game. Oh, I loved that game. I never had a quarter, it felt like. I'd either steal them from the wishing well. <laughs> you know, I'd steal, that's wild. Just dawned on me right now, the quarter I stole out of the wishing well to play Super Mario Brothers has come true that I get to be the voice of Mario. But I clearly stole someone else's wish. So, just waiting for that. He looks stoned, uh, I know. That's what I thought, too. <laughs> row of karma dominoes to come crashing down on me. But as it is right now, it's a me, a Mario. That's not the voice. You'll have to wait to hear the voice. But we've been working hard at it, and, and I'm really excited to announce that I'm going to be the voice of that video game that I dreamed about <laughs> playing as a kid. Dreams come true. <laughs> My first thought really was like, oh, he's stone as fuck. <laughs> he's like, he's like, it's me, Mario. That's not the voice, though. Don't, don't, don't take that out. Please don't take that out of context. <laughs> Look. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, like, he's he's human like all of us. He's excited about the role, and he smokes weed. So, I mean, I hope I hope that it's good. I hope that it's good. I can't imagine Chris Pratt doing a Mario voice, really. But Charlie Day is definitely, like you said, the wild card. Like, he's going to be... I mean, John Guizamo is also, like, kind of the wild card funny man. Uh, and, you know, that's I, I expect Charlie Day to kind of be the same, because he is that person. Like, that's that's that's, that's who he is, personality-wise, or his character. Uh, but huge missed opportunity here, though. I mean, they really could have gone with something a little, a little bit more fitting, you know. I felt like this would have been a good transition for these two. Just take it, just take it straight to the big screen. But unfortunately, unfortunately, Chris Pratt beat out. <laughs> said, That's the dream. <laughs> yeah, I would pay money for that, please, please. I mean, back to the. Uh, oh, sh um, pretty much the same as Italian. See, with uh, the way his eyes looked, I'm pretty sure he, uh, he isn't feeling excited. <laughs> Jack Black may steal this show. Yep. The muscle with the wild card. That's right. The muscle. <laughs> Danny DeVito. <laughs> Is Charlie Day taller than Chris Pratt? I don't know, actually. Uh, let's find out. Let me see. How how tall is Charlie Day? Charlie Day is five foot seven. Oh, he's a dinky. Let's see, Chris Pratt is Chris Pratt is six foot fucking two since when that's a that publisher bullshit all right that's his publicist right there all right that's all that is Jesus there's a fucking huge difference between the two 
God damn. So Mario's gonna be tall. Well, it's fucking. It's 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 voiced. It's animated. So never mind. Doesn't matter. But still, it's weird. <laughs> he's five foot ten. He's totally five foot ten. Tom Cruise six foot four. <laughs> Charlie, I heard Charlie Day was tiny. Wow, I had no idea. Wow, man. Um. Oh, it's funny. It also gives it gets. So apparently, there's a lot of people searching for like. All of the Avengers and how tall they are. Because look, it's like Chris Evans is six foot six foot zero. Uh, Dave Patista is uh, six foot four. Chris Hemsworth six foot three. Chris Evans, Captain America is like the shortest guy. <laughs> He's like the shortest guy on the fucking stage. Um, Bowser's can't. Bowser sings a kid safe tenacious D song. That's right. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what they do because I, I feel like look at look at what if. Right. There's always there's always these new types of um, mainstream animation styles that come out that at first are a little off putting. Like when I first saw What If, I was just kind of like, oh, it's kind of weird. But then it grew on me and it really, really works. Uh, and that's like anytime I see uh, like Scanner Darkly, right? Like Scanner Darkly, I was just like, oh, man, it's kind of weird. But then I watched the whole movie and I loved it. There's always like these new interest, interesting kind of uh, takes on different art styles um, that they push to like, you know, to mainstream animated titles or whatever or series like, yeah, the Star Wars animated shit. Um and so, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that they they wow us with something new that also captures that uh, the essence of uh, of Mario and everything like that. You know, bright colors and all that shit. I'm trying to imagine Donkey Kong with Seth Rogen's voice. He just has to talk. I feel like he could just talk. <laughs> of all the characters, of all the characters that they've cast, the one that I think sounds exactly that sounds closest to the character without even trying is gonna be Seth Rogen. It's gonna be Seth Rogen. Kevin Spacey as Wario. I don't know if Kevin Spacey's hireable right now. Um, so yeah, look out for that. <clears throat> 2022, next year sometime. Um, see, DK is going to be high the whole time. You feel the same way about Key as Toad? <laughs> yes. Yes, I could see that too. Uh, so, Activision had a very exciting... Very, very exciting past couple weeks. Um, they've had a very exciting past couple of um, months. Uh, so they release, they release Diablo Two remaster. They release Diablo Two remaster, Donut Park or something. Um, and in that remaster, uh, they had some issues initially, right? Um, they had issues with characters apparently disappearing and they're not, not being able to connect to servers on their day one. Uh, posted this tweet that we're investigating issues that's causing delays in game creation. Uh, they basically had their own little hair 37, exactly. <laughs> they had their own little reminder. Remember? Oh, remember? Remember? Uh, <laughs> error 37? Boy, what a, what a catastrophe that entire launch was. Uh, but I've heard that it's a little bit smoother now. All right, I've heard that it's a little bit smoother now. It was just a little rough uh, for the first day and then it kind of smoothed out after that. But I don't, I don't play. Um, I, I don't, I don't, uh, <clears throat> I don't play Blizzard games. I just report on them now. Uh, some new job openings at Activision Blizzard. Quite a few, quite a few actually. If only there was a president to look at why we're forcing online into Diablo. It wasn't a good idea. <sighs> yeah, here's your remaster. You can only play it online. Whatever. Don't touch the devil's lettuce of video games. The devil's lettuce. Uh, <laughs> isn't that like uh, it's for all the problems it has? It's uh, it's still really fun. Oh, good. Um. Yeah, I heard that. I mean, I've seen the, the videos. The graphics look awesome. They did a good job on that. Um, but, <clears throat> oh, and also you should note that it's, uh, if you're somebody who's on the fence about supporting Blizzard and everything, uh, this was developed by Vicarious Visions. So Vicarious Visions, um, which is now part of Activision, but but only recently has been part of Activision and become part of Activision. Uh, they're the ones that worked on the, um, uh, on, on the remaster. So if you're on the fence about supporting Blizzard, and maybe you want to play the game or whatever, and you want to, you know, but you're kind of whatever, just know that you'd be probably be making Vicarious Visions look good because something that they worked on ended up being good. So, <clears throat> I mean, they've been activists for years. Was it years? Oh, God, has it been that long? Fuck, I don't know. It's, has it been years? Shit, I don't even know now. Um, but does it require a phone? <laughs> Best is to stay the fuck away. Hold on a second. I'm yelling at Donut. Come here, Donut. You hear him barking? I'm the only one here. Jeez. Come here. Have a seat. Come here, Donut. 
Tell me, here he comes. Here he comes. Uh, was it 2010-ish? I must be mixing it up with somebody else. Oh, yeah. You shush. No barking. Okay? Shush. <laughs> you so sad. <laughs> He's so sad. I know. Oh, come on. You stay here with me. Stay here with me. We'll keep doing this. Uh, <clears throat> Hi. Oh, you're such a good boy. <clears throat> He's so good. You see how good he is? Anyways, anyways, moving on. Activision employees file a, uh, a suit with the uh, National Labor Relations Board. So what does that mean? The National Labor Relations Board handles... Oh, yep, I'm trying to get the button. Psh, there we go. The COAS has a riot. That's right, we'll hold this. Uh, they they basically go after companies who are not uh, uh, abiding by you know certain laws, regulations, and all that stuff regarding uh, labor practices. Uh, they've gone after... Like, they're currently going after uh, uh, Starbucks in New York. They have gone after... Or maybe are currently going after uh, Amazon... Uh, they basically have a lot of basically a whole lot of open a whole lot of open uh, doors and cases and stuff like that for different companies that they're they're going after. Oh, what up, Brittany? What is going on here? What up? What up? What up? We're doing news right now. I gotta get my co-host up here because he would he wouldn't doesn't understand what quiet on the set means, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so the National Labor Relations Board is also is going after Blizzard. Also, also the SEC. Is going after Blizzard. <laughs> also, the equal opportunity employers are going after Blizzard. Every, there's just a line right now of people going after Blizzard. Like, just <laughs> take a number. And so in the midst of all this, <clears throat> a dog pile. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's not getting better. It's definitely not getting better. Uh, Bobby Kotick has been... Has been uh, um, uh, subpoenaed for information. Uh, let me read some of this here. The SEC has requested a variety of documents from the publisher, including CEO Bobby Kotick's uh, communication with other high-level executives about the allegations. Beyond that, the regulators want to see separation agreements with employees who left this year, which is important because once they get those, once they get that paperwork, they can look into it and see if it says anything along the lines of like, you are not allowed to say anything negative about the company after you leave, right? There are certain guidelines and regulations to certain things you could tell an employee when they're leaving. You know, because when you leave, you can kind of just say whatever the fuck you want. But if you sign this thing and you get like a fat payout when you leave, fat separation package, then you kind of beholden to it. But it also might be illegal, but you got paid, so you don't know what to do. So that's where the SEC and the Equal Opportunity folks come in. And then, of course, back on the workers with the NLRB, uh, their their complaint is that Blizzard has done everything within their power to harass people who are trying to form a union. We've always talked about how people in games, whether it's the Twitch uh, Twitch streamers or employees at various game development studios, uh, they they should probably form some kind of union to have some kind of protection should anything happen, uh, which it does all the time. <laughs> <laughs> where they just get kicked out like a toss violation, you know? Like I was just I was just sitting here patting my dog and I put him down. Maybe I put him down too hard, right? <laughs> Maybe that's a toss violation. Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it's a uh, not if when. Yeah. So <clears throat> this is this is something that um I mean, they're getting dogpiled. Uh they're doing what every company has done in the past. This is no this is not like a surprise or anything. Uh, every basically every game company, every industry, whenever you leave whenever there's like a public image to uphold and you're leaving under any terms, you usually signs up on a paperwork with your severance package that says you're not gonna talk shit about the company. That's pretty common. Um, it's just how that's worded. The verbiage of that is what they're gonna be reviewing and seeing if they cross any lines or anything. It doesn't necessarily mean they're in trouble for it, it just means that they're gonna be reviewing everything. Um <clears throat> And then when it comes to like uh, unions and stuff like that, I mean, we've already seen that everywhere. We've seen it everywhere. Uh, Amazon says no unions. Uh, Starbucks says no unions, no unions at the store level. Um, uh, and basically every big company is just like, no, no unions. No, why? Why? Why so the employees got power? Bargaining chips? What? No, no, it doesn't work that way. Right to work or whatever the fuck. <laughs> so yeah, they're getting piled on. I'm really surprised there hasn't been a, a on make it though. But then again, I'm not surprised because Court of America. I worked through a union vote at a company. It was horrendous. To be fair, many companies will also not shit talk you as an employee if you didn't get fired for something bad. It's true. It's true. They legally, in most in most states, I believe, it, may, it might even be federal uh, or uh, uh, nationwide, but whenever 
uh, whenever you call somebody like a former employer, employer, uh, I believe they legally, they told me this, that, that you legally could not say the person was like a shit bag or something. You know, like if, if I fired somebody for stealing, I couldn't say I fired him for stealing. Right. I had, I had to like be like, yeah, well we parted under circumstances other than, or whatever. There's like some verbiage we had to use for it or whatever. Um, and there's been times where like, yeah, like I've caught employees stealing and shit like way back when I worked retail and pff, their new job would call. Hey, this is so-and-so with McDonald's. Just wanted to see if you, uh, so, oh yeah, he's great. He's great. You'll love him. You will love him. Just, uh, I can only say, yeah, that's right. Will not be re He's not rehirable. That's, that's exactly what it was. Yeah, it's not rehirable. Unions are an interesting beast was an eye-opening experience at Disney. Oh, I bet. Yeah, I mean, you know what? And I'm always like, I, there are times when unions can definitely uh, overreach, I feel like, especially here in the Bay Area with uh, public transit. We've had a couple of instances where um, uh, our main arterial like public transit system uh, has gone on strike, which has basically caused a gridlock in the entirety of the Bay. So, like, millions of people couldn't get to work. Um and it's stuff like that that where it's like when a union has that much power, like where they could actually like shut down an entire, uh, you know, megalopolis, like. Mm. <laughs> and it was it was I mean it was a long time ago, but man, I was really like fuck fuck unions you know, at the time. But but the reality is that I mean the employees need any kind of help and support they could get, but they're not going to get it from the companies themselves, and the companies only care about money. So <sighs> not people. Welcome to France. Shut down the country. France does that shit all the time. You can't do nothing in France without the people shutting shit down. <laughs> so, <clears throat> in the midst of all this, we have some people leaving. <laughs> it is true, isn't it? Isn't it true? Uh, we had we had uh, uh, some people leaving. Uh, Overwatch Two Chief. This is um, 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 um Chaco Chaco Sunny. Uh, he was, where'd her ads go? Because you fucking make, you make sounds. Um, so Chaco Sunny, who is the EP of uh, Overwatch and Overwatch 2, is, uh, is is moving on to greener pastures. He was at the company for five years. And um, uh, now he's moving on to other things. Also, people who have left in the past several weeks. Uh, we had uh, Blizzard president. J. Allen Brack. We had the head of HR, Jesse Meshuk, which was like last week or something. I can't remember. Uh, we had former Overwatch lead Jeff Kaplan. We have the chief legal officer, Claire Hart, in the midst of all these legal filings. She's just like, see you later. Uh, we had uh, Diablo 4 director, Jesse McCree. <laughs> We had uh, Diablo 4 director also, or maybe co-director, uh, Luis Barriga, and then, of course, now the head of development. So these are big names, people that are that are leaving. Uh, he's so, so J. Allen Brack is, like, leaving, but, like, not, like, he's basically, he's no longer the president. We have uh, Ibarra and, I forget the name of the other person, uh, who are co-presidents now. Uh, and he's going to be staying on the board, I believe, to just like advise or something or whatever but i don't think he's ever going to come back as a um uh as as the lead as the president again so <clears throat> i think he's eventually he's basically on his way out for the most part so yeah i mean people are leaving i mean if we want to go back farther i mean basically everybody that was one of the ogs and we covered this we were like oh my god all the ogs are leaving and now we find out it's like oh maybe they're leaving because they were being investigated for sexual harassment lawsuits and everything like that oh my god so and we don't know who who is going to be, uh, like, who's the next person to get yeeted? Uh, I see J.A.B. side shuffle to head of copy-paste division. <laughs> so, so uh, they did pick up, they did pick up somebody new. They picked up uh, Julie Hodges, who is the, he was, like, the former people person, chief people officer at, uh, um, at Disney for 32 years. 32 years that she was at Disney. Uh, and so she's been brought in. Obviously, to help fix shit. What, you too? Uh, so, and they also picked up, yeah, Delta Airlines, Sandeep Du, but he works for, uh, he does like not a commercial stuff or something. Uh, so, in his return, yes, he has. Welcome back, Sunday. Hey, welcome back, Sunday. Thank you for the chat interaction. Right, bonus points. Appreciate it. Uh, so, Blizzard is uh, definitely experiencing a lot of turbulence because Disney has a great rep for how it treats its employees. I know. <clears throat> Disney boss only hire white people. Well, she white. I don't know about anyone, but still. Uh, so yeah, there, there, there are. Uh, there definitely 
having experienced some turbulence for sure. Uh, so their response, their responses lately have been really um, interesting. Blizzard is basically doing everything they can except for the right thing. Like, for example, they took some art in the game and they swapped it out because it was just too, I don't know. It was just not, maybe doesn't fit their current direction or something. So, for example, in the game somewhere, you can see this. Ooh. Ooh. And that has been swapped out for this. A bowl of fruit. <clears throat> now, somebody thinks that this bowl of fruit is less, less appealing than this. I'll have y'all know, man. Some fruit. Uh, maybe it's hard enough you can still see the lady. I don't wonder, huh? Is there like a, is it like one of those things you cross your eyes? Uh, you see a bowl of fruit. I see a sexy orange. That's right. I love fruit. I see fruit sex. I bone that orange. That's right. That's right. No bananas though. I bet they made sure there's no bananas. You know, they did. <laughs> They're like, they're like, we need like, we need something like totally sexless. <laughs> no way. There's no way anyone could get sexy with that. Yeah. Bananas too horny. That's right. No peaches. Yeah. No peaches. It's just fucking oranges. The fuck? Oranges and like a lemon. <sighs> no melons. See? They're totally sex. They're doing the they're doing the wrong things, man. This, this part doesn't make any sense. Uh, they also renamed the twin consorts, and more hilariously, uh, they renamed the Big Love Rocket. You guys probably remember this, the Big Love Rocket. They renamed to the X forty five something something. <sighs> so yeah, it's um because it's because the name is too sexual. All right, Big Love Rocket. No, no, but hey, at least, at least this fixes everything though, right? Like now it's like, thank God Blizzard's turned over a new leaf and they removed anything even remotely, even rem any kind of innuendo is gone, except, except this lovely poster. I don't know where this guy is. I got this from r slash wow, but I know this poster also exists, I believe, in the sauna in Gallywix's like resort or whatever, just north of Orgrimmar. So it's only a matter of time, only a matter of time before this gets uh, replaced with what? What kind of fruit? What do you think? Like kiwis or something? Like kiwi, some... Uh, cantaloupes or something no, those are melons pineapple avocado yeah kiwis are hairy paws can't see <sighs> dragon fruit dragon fruit perfect a bowl of brag dragon fruit you can't you there is there is no horny with a bowl of dragon fruit please Now, now I'm worried. <laughs> is there is there a horny with dragon fruit? I don't think so. No horny dragon fruit. Well, there will be now. I know. Huh? Rule four. Uh, rule thirty four. Rule forty three. Is that the fruit version? <laughs> rule thirty four. Now, now we'll we'll go see if there's a uh, dragon fruit porn. <laughs> oh God, next yes. <laughs> you dragon. All in air. Cut a hole. In it. That's right. That's right. So PC gamer. Has set up, uh, they actually set up a timeline. Uh, I love this. Let me go back to the first page here. Oh god, there's so much. Oh god, oh god, oh god, I can't. Okay, so let me, we'll just start at the top. They set up a timeline in case you want to follow the action. It's slightly less complicated than primers, okay? So you, it might be kind of difficult to follow along if you're new or if you've only read through the story once, all right? But they basically have bulleted lists like a table of contents there's everything so far and all this stuff is set up by date september 21st september 20th september 17th september 14th august 26th august 11th august 13th there's so many look at this and the story just keeps on going so if you want to catch up um here's your timeline right here <laughs> fucking 
complicated as fuck. It's so much. So yeah, Blizzard's gonna have a uh, uh, TLTR. Blizz, Blizz, Blizzard's Blizzard Blizzard is rip. Uh, pretty much. <sighs> Sell your stocks before it's too late. I don't know what what are their stocks doing actually. See, Acti stock. Their stock is doing probably fine. Honestly, shit like this probably fine. Oh no, not good. Uh, <laughs> oh no, not good. Uh, I mean, the trends year to date has been kind of meh. Anyways, let me see one whole year. I mean, overall they've been doing kind of meh. I mean, overall they've been doing kind of meh. Yeah, they were they were great back in 2011. Oh, look at that. Can anybody tell me what was happening in 2011? Come on, come on. First one gets nothing. Come on. What was happening in 2011 when Blizzard was hot? Wrath. That's right. That's right. So how how much you want to bet we're gonna have? Uh, uh, is it the wrong stock? Oh, it is. <laughs> Activision stock. <laughs> how funny because the timeline where I'm actually matched up. Oh, look. Okay, so okay, this looks a little closer to what I remember. Yes, yes. So it still looks about the same. Uh, going down. Actually, let's go look at their max. Look at 2011. Oh, nothing. Okay, so so this this looks a little bit closer. How funny, wrong stock. Uh, so I got if I was one, uh, if it was one, I'd be jumping out the window. Yeah, seventy five dollars. This is actually still pretty good. Um, when I I had Blizzard stock two years ago. Um, let me get it loading here. I had Blizzard stock probably around here. Yeah, around here was like forty bucks or something like that. Um, and then I sold it right around here. And I was like, cool, man. I made ten dollars or twenty dollars stock. Pretty good. Pretty good. Um. But yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's gone down in the past, you know, few months. I mean, this doesn't look good. I mean, for what ninety, it was peaked at ninety six dollars, ninety eight dollars, uh, ninety nine dollars, and then from then it's just kind of gone downhill. What date is this? Let me see, June fourteenth. Where is the see July twenty third? Uh, I want to say this controversy started maybe around here somewhere. Um, somewhere around here. So who knows. Do you guys think that Blizz is going to pull out of this and just be totally fine on the other side? Everyone's going to forget about it and start playing video games and that's it? I mean, the Hong Kong thing kind of blew over. I see. Nope. Nope. I see. Yep. I see. Yes. Get a little mixed bag. A little 50-50 here. Hmm. Huh. Nope. Hmm. <sighs> hate to say it, but yes. They did with Riot. It's true. They did with Riot. Riot pulled pulled out of it just fine. Now with the current cancel culture, it'll take years. We'll forget about it, but they'll find a way to get the other side, but it'll be a year or more still, maybe another year or two. Okay, okay, so next question. Do you think that Bobby is going to be uh, uh, in charge of Activision Blizzard a year from now? Just curious. Because they're subpoena all of his stuff. I say, yep. Bobby can fuck right off, but that doesn't answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. I don't I'm not a I'm not a Bobby fan because I feel like as a CEO, as a person, he makes way too much way too fucking much money. It's way too fucking much money when I know how much people make at Blizzard, right? The actual employees. And then there's this guy making hundreds of million dollars a year. It's fucking stupid. And yes, that's what I'm worried about is actually he's untouchable uh because he's just he holds all the cards. Um replacing him Probably won't solve the problem. Everybody wants to go after him now because he's he's the leader. So it's like he should answer. He should answer for it. Kind of like whenever something happens underneath a, a, a certain president's presidency, like Trump or Biden, it falls it falls on the president because they're in charge, right? Um, but swapping it out for another CEO, we might get stuck with the same fucking problems, right? We're, what needs to happen is the shift everywhere underneath. Uh, then you get a new weird CEO. Oh well, yeah, exactly. The two ponies he's gotten while over 400 plays were laid off. Exactly. And if he leaves, he'll get a golden parachute and nothing will change. That is that is accurate. If history has taught us anything. JAB took the bull bullets, dove right in front of them all. Yeah, then he take the floor off from under him. If he's getting there, I just uh, see them dumping blizz. You see who dumping blizz? You think uh, um I saw I saw I saw some people thinking that um Somebody said that they were going to sell all of Blizzard's assets or something like that. Or uh, IP, sorry. Um, and I just think that is so far from what's going to happen. Uh, JAP and take stance. Uh, he's good for the rest of his life. It sounds like unions is the answer, but it'll never happen. God damn it. We're just stuck in this fucking absurd, absurd capitalism hellhole. Work until you die. Work until you die. <laughs> 
Uh, Blizzard Activision are too interwoven. That's right. I've always said Blizzard Activision, same company. But now all of a sudden, oh no, Blizzard's totally separate. Yeah, that's their own thing. The building, yes. And the culture, yes. I'll give that to them for sure. Um, but as a company, it's still Blizzard Activision. Uh, see, Blizzard is a corpse of Activision puppets. Yep. Moving on. Moving on. Twitch. Moving on to Twitch. Uh, I'll just die. <laughs> Valor Morgulis. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Twitch. Twitch uh, and the music industry got together. Finally. Uh, and they try to hammer out something that would benefit uh, us, the creators and streamers on the platform. And what they created was, uh, well, it's not really going to change anything. It doesn't really change much. So them and the uh, the National Music Publishers Association got together and they came up with a deal that would change the structure of how DMCAs would work. Um, and so the way it works now uh, is that says Twitch will give creators a chance to course correct by first issuing a warning. So now we get a warning. Um Twitch will remove any VODs and clips that contain unauthorized music from the creator's channel. And if a live stream involves one of several specified flagrant music uses, examples include rebroadcasting music concerts and rebroadcasting pre-release tracks. Pre-release tracks. we we'll make that clear. Twitch may also issue a warning or penalty depending on the creator's history of that kind of music use. We will have more information to share in the coming, uh, in the coming uh, weeks. So... Uh, yeah, now I say at no point was this supposed to intentionally benefit the streamers. Yeah, no, 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 it's not going to benefit. This This is basically just a buffer for them uh, to basically just say, oh, we'll take care of it. We'll we'll warn them and then we'll get rid of them, whatever. Although I have to say, at least it's a step in, it's a step in the right direction. At least we know that Twitch is at least talking to music publishers. I think YouTube, didn't YouTube like actually have actual deals that they're working on with, with, uh, uh, uh music? Hold on a second. I'm gonna look this up because I I think I just read that. Uh, music, uh, record labels, DMCA, keywords, 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 keywords. Uh, nope, 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 nope. Okay, so I don't see anything. Um, oh, that's right, that's right. The thing I saw was how they uh they removed a, the bots, the music bots or whatever from uh uh from uh Discord. To, because they're putting in a new feature. We'll talk about that later, actually. So, <clears throat> so yeah, yeah. YouTube, YouTube has a really good system where underneath the video they will show the um uh like the name of the song, who has the licensing rights, and all that stuff. So YouTube actually has a really good system for this. Uh, so every time you get flagged for music, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to get uh or that you're going to get a strike. It just means that you're probably going to take money from the from those ads, and so. That's how it works. And that's it. Easy. Um, let's see. In my opinion, Twitch burnt too many bridges and letting creators get away with copyrighted music. That any deals that are going to be near impossible as a platform option. I want to know if people still get DMCA claims for man breathing sound effect number 87. If you play it, they're playing a scary game. I haven't seen anybody get those, but I've gotten those on YouTube before. Yeah. Yeah. There's like some sound effect or something like that will like trigger something. Um, yeah, it can be, it can be finicky at times for sure. But, uh, also with Twitch, some good news. Twitch announced that they are going to be, uh, 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 or that next year we're going to have BlizzCon. Ooh. Ooh. Is this exciting, Grand Boy? I'm oh, sorry, TwitchCon. Did I say BlizzCon? <laughs> TwitchCon! <laughs> no, there's never going to be a BlizzCon again. <laughs> Just scratch that off. Never gonna be a BlizzCon again, all right? That's gone. <laughs> Freudian slip. Wrong stock, I know. God damn it. BlizzCon. Whoa. Uh, TwitchCon. So TwitchCon is happening. TwitchCon is gonna be in uh, uh, in San Diego, October 2022, and prior to that, July 2022, uh, which is in like six months, seven months, nine months. <laughs> Math. Uh, <laughs> that's gonna. They're gonna be in Amsterdam. I don't know. I don't trust. I don't trust that a bunch of uh, a bunch of young partners making a ton of money are gonna are gonna be able to handle themselves in Amsterdam of all places, all right? But we'll see. 
San Diego was pretty good. Uh, San Diego was pretty great. I was there some years back. Uh, San Diego one. And, uh, uh, you know, it was great. Weather was, I mean, it's San Diego, so, you know, weather was beautiful, you know, all the time. Um, Blizz is on thin ice. BlizzCon is in cold storage. That's right. So, yeah, uh, if you guys are interested in going, you can. They did say, uh, they did say we intend for TwitchCon to return with TwitchCon Amsterdam in July and followed by TwitchCon San Diego in October. Of course, these are, these are still uncertain times and our plans will remain flexible as needed. Our top priority while planning TwitchCon is safety and we will closely follow local health and guide, local health guidelines and recommendations. So there's no mention of, because this is the number one question people are asking when they, when they posted this was that there's no mention of any kind of vaccination requirements or anything, but I could tell you that it's probably going to be up to the, uh, whatever, whatever the regulations are for the country or the state slash province or the city or the county or uh the venue there's 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 multiple tiers of of uh, uh of you know rules and regulations that could be amps is gonna need a crap load more uh pedal bikes what a gamble for a trip well we're looking at i mean fuck we're looking at you know seven and nine, nine months from now or whatever um like fuck <laughs> I mean, sure, last year I would have been like, yeah, this time next year, sure, it's possible. Uh, that'll happen, remember Pax Pox? Yeah. Yeah, why, wait, what, why are these women silhouette in the windows? What are you talking about? Um, oh, <laughs> Amsterdam, yes, okay. I looked around the room, I was like, what are you talking about? Um, so yeah, no mention of whether they're going to do any kind of like vaccination reinforcement or anything like that. I don't know uh, how things are going in Amsterdam in terms of, uh, uh, you know, coronavirus stuff. Like if they're like doing great or if they're like getting busted up by Delta or whatever. I have no idea. But maybe Coda is not the worst you could catch at that con. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, in some cases, probably just just keep your stuff to yourself, guys. You won't catch anything. All right. All right. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Come on. Was 2020 the first time they tried Amsterdam? Nature said, nope, nope, nope. I don't know. I don't, did they? Yeah, Nature said, nope, just for sure. Where's he catches these hands? Uh, cookie clicker news next. <laughs> yes, speaking of, I mean, I was going to quick check. Let me see. Uh, uh, again, thank you, Machine. Machine X made a, Machine X7 made a, uh, uh, a mod that will read if I'm streaming and it says 122 viewers and you're Boosting my cookies per second by 61%. Dang, I'm gonna buy so many grandmas when I'm done with this stream. It's awesome. So yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. Oh Lord, I know. I know it's so dumb. I don't know why. Why am I fucking playing this stupid game? It's just open. That's why. Because it's open. It is open. It is always open. Uh Discord. Uh, so they they took down uh we had a couple bots that were shut down by google uh we didn't use them in our discord but uh uh other folks did and they were basically they were music bots as the title says uh but discord is testing a new feature has anybody seen this feature it's supposed to be a youtube it's youtube integration where basically everybody can sit down and watch a synced embedded youtube video um and you know live commentating on all that good stuff so uh, has anybody actually seen it? And supposedly some people have access to it, but I've not seen it anywhere. Um, things that also sync besides just the music and video, uh, the ads. <laughs> so right now, right now it, it, it's, it's, it's this thing where the ads or the ads, people are like, why don't I just fire up a screen share? <laughs> and the problem solved. Uh, I'm part of approximately 40 Discord servers. I used yours and a personal one for friends. But do you see anything? Only see Twitch emotes. I uh, it would be seen in uh, in YouTube. Uh, so yeah, it, it's it's coming soon. I think it's actually could be a pretty interesting uh, feature. Like I'm thinking about it in terms of like my Discord, right? And we have a bot. Thank you, Wovie. That will automatically post whenever I post a video on YouTube, right? And it posts to, it posts to a special channel. But wouldn't it be cool if like right at that moment, right when it releases, you just like play it, right? And then just everyone could watch it together. Isn't it, wouldn't it be cool if like a force you flex to watch my videos? Like, favorite, subscribe. I also wonder how that does works for views. If you have like a thousand people watching a video, that's an embed on YouTube. Does it count as a thousand embed views? 
Uh, was the issue with the bots more they were avoiding all ads on the songs? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. 100%. Smash that like button. Hit the bell. That's right. Dang, hit the bell. Oh, man. Oh, man. Let's uh, let's follow up. Will you count his views? I don't know. I don't know. I'll let you know for sure. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, double back to... Uh, we covered so much of the Epic versus Apple controversy. And um, we know that... Epic lost 9 out of 10, but the one that they won, the one that they won, uh, was a very important one. And it basically forced, forces Apple to allow apps to use their own payment processors starting in December, I believe. So um, so that's that's an issue that will probably get, uh, they'll get appealed, they'll probably fight it again and all that good stuff. There's no way that Apple's going to let that happen. So don't, don't, don't count your blessings before they hatch or whatever. Um, but... Epic had to pay some money to Apple because their feelings or something. Fuck, I don't know. Uh, and so a Epic paid Apple six million dollars, and we're like, "Please reinstate our developer account." And Apple said, "Thank you for the money. We appreciate we appreciate that we didn't have to go through other means in order to get garnish wages and all that stuff. Thank you so much." But no, bitch. They said they're not gonna let them back on until they until the court ruling is finalized, and probably. Probably only if it's finalized in Apple's favor. So, is this gonna fuck Apple in the long run? Well, this is just this is just for Fortnite, really, and probably any other games that Epic has through the through their Epic developer account, not through other developers that use Unreal Engine. Although that was really fucking close. Like they could have done that. They could have definitely done that. Um, you take that. Take that, Epic. You know, ah, fuck. I'm torn. I'm so torn in this mess. Like. <sighs> I really want I really want Apple to like ease up on on being just like so fucking controlling over their platform but at the same time like I, fuck man I don't know I don't know the battle of the tims that's right tim apple versus tim epic it's their platform I know oh god I hate that it's their platform I hate that top what a cop out it's their platform shut up the worst <laughs> uh, related like epic but fuck oh yeah exactly meanwhile meanwhile android folks are kind of sitting on the side it's like <laughs> the entire next young generation gets android phones apple is done apple is done uh don't worry apple's not going anywhere anytime soon they'll find some way to market to zoomers and they'll they'll, they'll maintain their same market share forever um because the the parents, the iPhone parents, are gonna be passing them on to their kids, so their kids will be growing up with with iPhones. And then the Android parents are gonna be passing those on to their kids, so the an the Android parents are gonna be raising little Androids, little Android kids. So that's what that's how it works. Yeah, but Tim pretending to do all this for the little guy makes it all the sweeter to see him get slapped in the face. <laughs> the cyborg children, that's right. And nobody got the right to repair. The end. <laughs> Thank you. And nobody has right to repair. The end. Story's over. Story's over. Um, do any of you guys watch reality competition shows? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, does anyone watch reality competition shows? <laughs> no. No. Like, wait, you mean like the, the mask and all that stuff? Like you don't watch the who's behind the mask or whatever the singing singing mask, you don't watch uh, uh what was the dancing one they did the mask dancer. <laughs> I will say though I will say, I will say that um, I can see your voice or hear your voice or whatever the fuck it was called with Ken Jong is actually really good. All right, that one was actually pretty good. Uh, there was no, like, celebrity bullshit, like, who's behind the mask kind of thing. It was just somebody gets up and fucking sings, and you have to guess if that's their voice or not. And that was rad. I thought that was rad. The, another one that's really good that is severely underrated is Lego Masters. You guys are fucking missing out. Lego Masters is so fucking good. So anybody who plays with Legos or has played with Lego, you have to watch this show. It is fucking good. I love it. I love it so much. Uh, what are I said Lego? 
I said Legos the first time, but that corrected the second time. Hoping you guys would have noticed. Jesus Christ. Isn't there a new Avatar show where people are virtual? Virtual? Oh, Ash, you actually really, really like Lego Masters. Boy, that's what I'm talking about, Void. That's right. Oh, yeah, Chop's pretty, Chop's pretty dope. Chop, Chop is evergreen, though. Chop, Iron Chef, Top Chef, uh, Master Chef, uh, Hell's Kitchen, uh, Kitchen Nightmares. Anything with Gordon Ramsay in it. Like, these are evergreen shows. You can always, we can watch these anytime. Anytime. Uh, oh, and also, what's the one with the boats? What's the, 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 the boat one? With all the people on the boats. There's, like, sexual tension everywhere. And, like, ritzy people coming on, like, paying thousands of dollars in tips. Something about boats. Anyways. Um, nope, never watched any of that stuff. See, that's why I know you're lying. <laughs> Anyways, yes, speaking of Below Deck, that's the one. Jen watches that religiously. Um, and I catch a couple episodes. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Anyway, so watch this. And this fall, Fox reinvents the singing competition. Hey! What? Join me for a look behind the scenes of Alter Ego. Nick, can you explain the technology for me? I cannot. The technology behind this show is truly revolutionary. It's taking a real stage with lighting and mixing it into the actual virtual world. They won't perform as themselves. They'll be given a chance to transform into next generation superstars. We put on a bodysuit, which is really tight and leaves nothing to the imagination. So you'll start there, I'll put you there. The technology in this show is thoroughly amazing. First, the single... Oh wait, first... First, character creator, let's go! Girls choose their alter ego <laughs> avatar. Alter egos can have different color skin. Uh, give me the mad Singer, but like, we can't afford the suits anymore. I know. Will I, I know. Will I, he really does have no emotions when he talks. The tech is cool, but all, man, it's, it's a prime example of like mainstream TV, like trying to basically snatch up something that is, you know, kind of cool and you know it's like vtubers you know vtubers is kind of a cool thing it's kind of taken off right and they're just like not nah, some exec saw code miko for reals no seriously um should ask some kringas for their character creation tech <laughs> to go some hips hips and titty sliders <laughs> how, how how far down does this waist slider go uh classic case of just because you can doesn't mean you should what's it called together it's called uh it is called uh alter ego alter ego uh, like, honestly, if they had done this with actual VTubers, it would be kind of awesome. But that's the thing. Actual VTubers don't interest them. They don't want to, they don't want to take, they don't want to take what already exists. They want to try to create their own fucking Fortnite looking ass characters. Look at, I mean, this seriously, look at, look at some of the beginning here. Fuck, it's Fortnite, man. It's fucking Fortnite characters. And that's what they're going <laughs> to. <laughs> And they're just gonna market it, man. That's what they're gonna market it. Uh, Ready Player One karaoke at Unity. <laughs> no, you can't unsee Fortnite because it is. It's fucking Fortnite. It is. So, anyways, uh, that's a show that's coming soon. Um, whenever I just got here, what the fuck is this? It's it's somebody biting off of Code Miko and making it fucking trillions of dollars doing it. I uh, wonder without VTubers, this would have happened one day. Only a matter of time. That's true. That's true. That's true. Um, time to check out my Unity stonks. <laughs> exactly. Lastly, looks like the same tech code Miko uses too. Yeah, she's like the motion capture bodysuit with the with the camera facing uh, facing you. Um, yeah, it's pretty. I mean, it's, she has she's got an amazing setup. But you know, they'll they they'll find some way to 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 make it corny, and then like she's not gonna want to do it anymore, right? <sighs> Code Miko is amazing. Anyways, last story. Yeah, it's gonna be on TV. Fox, look for look for Will I Am <laughs> with the deadest pan hosting job you've ever seen. Um, next, next, next. Of course, Fox. Yep, yep. What they do? Uh, have you guys heard of PETA? <laughs> have you guys heard of PETA? You guys know PETA, right? It's like uh, not the bread. It's like um. Pizza, eggs, tacos, avocados, right? Um, so it is a <laughs> tasty animals. <laughs> I 
Well, okay, you guys heard of PETA. Now, have you heard about PETA's uncle? Have you heard about PETA's uncle? Not the one with the swollen balls from South America, not that one. Um, he works for Nintendo. You guys haven't heard of this? You guys didn't know? Yeah, Peter, no, no, no. Uh, Peter's uncle works at Nintendo and sent pictures of the Smash Ultimate beta used to test DLC characters. It says that the last fighter passed two characters and Peter's not a nugget mascot. Right? <laughs> of course, it's all bullshit, but. <laughs> weird it's just a this is just a very weird like hello fellow kids fellow teenagers type corporate facepalm shit it's a fucking weird uh of all people of all of all people or sorry of all i guess all groups or whatever um to go after or to uh, uh to fake a character or whatever in uh in is a nintendo game like they're asking. They're as asking to get a see a see a season assist. Just asking for it. Uh, of course, it's not like it's a crunchy chick. That's right. Make sure you follow the Peter guy if you want to play Animal Crossing. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. So Peter does have a history of uh, of uh, kind of chiming in on video games and everything. Again, it's very it's very hello fellow fellow teenagers. Um, this whole my uncle works in Nintendo thing. I saw this and I was like, what in the fuck? <laughs> That's fucking weird. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, was Peter one the one that had the weird-ass take on Pokemon? Yeah. 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 I, I don't care if you're, like, a vegan or a vegetarian or anything like that. Yes, I like chicken. I like chicken nuggets. I like meat, all that good stuff. Uh, I don't care. I just don't like Peter. Peter. Um, all uncles in Nintendo have just been fired. <laughs> just to be sure. Peter Good, though. That's true. Peter Brett Good. Uh, did I miss the Chris Pratt as Mario outrage news? Was it really outrage? It was hopeful, hopeful, cautiously optimistic. That's what it was. That's what it was. That's right, pity fool. That's right. That's what I heard, anyways. Cautiously optimistic. Come on, Zebrios. Cautiously optimistic. Anyways, that's it. He was high and happy. He was high as fuck. Doing that, doing that video. That's gonna be my thumbnail. <laughs> I was gonna find a picture of him. Just fucking put red cracks in the eyes and shit. <laughs> and a red hat. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to do this fucking thumbnail. Uh, <laughs> anyways, that's it for the news. We're done. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. Thank you, chat. You guys are the best. Thank you, thank you. Hi, MySpace. Sunday, come here. Come here and say bye. Come here and say bye. Come here. Come here. Okay, I guess I'm going to bring this with me. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, and we'll see you guys uh, We'll see you guys later. Chat, hang out for a bit. We'll come right back. Okay, wait. I'm putting you back. I'm putting you back. Sorry.